Today, I wanna to show you how to take the Steam input layout that you really like and then save it so that you don't have to make it over and over and over again if it might work for another game. Let's say that you've set up Doom with Flickstick and you've become really accustomed to those controls. The muscle memory is really starting to click and you feel like, like this might be the perfect controls for a first person shooter, for example. But then you switch over to a new first person shooter and you want things to feel the same but setting up your layout can be pretty time consuming and doing all of that work again kind of takes the wind out of your sails for playing a new game. I know for me, if I have to do a bunch of work to set up my game, I'm way less likely to actually play that game. I'll probably just use the default controls, which is fine, but it's limiting. Steam input is powerful. The power of the sun in the palm of my hand. But what if I told you that you didn't have to reinvent the wheel every single time you get a new game? I got the idea to make this video after seeing a comment from Cole Coleman on my last tutorial. By the way, if you want to see how to set up Flickstick or how to use action layers, I'll link to that video down below the like button. And here's what Cole Coleman said. Essentially, many games have similar controls and he hates it when he hates reinventing the wheel for every single game. So do I. So let's make it so you never have to do that again. I'm going to use Doom for my example. I've got Doom set up exactly the way that I want, using Flickstick and Gyro. So first, you don't have to have your game launched in order to do this. In fact, if you're not plugged into the wall, you probably shouldn't because you'll be running down your battery while you do it. But instead, go into your game, and then on the right-hand side, next to the cog menu, there's this small button that looks like a Steam controller. Tap on that. Then you're going to see View Layout, Edit Layout, and this gear icon. Tap on the gear icon. Here you have a few different options. We can see Export Layout, Share Layout with Community, and Layout Details, and then also Revert Changes. So if you make a bunch of changes and you decide you don't like them, you can always go back. I'm going to hit export layout. He's an importer export. <laughs> the reason I'm using export is because I'm making a template so that I can load it into any first person shooter and then make small adjustments instead of reinventing everything. Let's name our layout. I'm gonna call this one like, why? Because liking the video helps out a ton and it's free. And by the way, if you're new here, I'm Bill, and this is my channel all about the gaming industry. I make videos about gaming news, tutorials like this, and hardware reviews, and I have a podcast each week. I want to say a quick thanks to everyone who cl clicks that subscribe button, hits like. I'm close to 90,000 subscribers, and I would love to hit that this year. But back to what I was saying. Next up, you can name your layout description. But I, I got to be honest, I never bother with this. And finally, export type. You can choose between new personal save, new shareable personal save, or new template. Select new template, and then confirm. Okay. Next, I'm going to hop into a different first-person shooter game. This one's called Celico. This time I'm going to launch the game because I might have some things that I want to change about the setup, which I will determine on a game-by-game -game basis once I'm actually playing. But right now, I've got my game launched. Let's press the Steam button. Go over to controller settings, then controller settings again, and usually people just go into the edit layout. But here we can tap this really wide bar that's above the view and edit buttons. On top, we have four options. We're going to go with templates. I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom, and here you can see that I have user-created templates on the bottom. I also have a blank template down here in case I want to start fresh for a game that I don't think any of the other templates that I've made would work with. And like is the one that I made from Doom 2016. I'm going to go ahead and tap on that one. It's going to load in that template, and then I can just press the X button in order to apply it to the new game. Now I can make some slight adjustments if I want to for this particular game in order to make things work the way that I want them to. I'm not going to show all of that as I don't want this video to be too long, but check out my other tutorials with help on that part. I also saw this comment on my last tutorial, and I think it was important to address. MC SMC Dono said that it's just too much work to make, to make these Steam layouts. No worries, let me save you a ton of time. Press the Steam button, go to controller settings, tap the same button that I showed you last time, the one just above the view and the edit layout buttons. And this time, instead of going to recommended, instead of going to templates, head over to community layout. Here's the thing, the more that people play a game, the more likely it is that someone will have made an absolute killer layout for that particular game. And the likelihood goes up even more if it's a game that doesn't support controller. Anyway, 
For this part of the video, I'm going to quit out of Celico, which is a really cool game if you like boomer shooters, but let's check out a more popular game, one that definitely has community layouts for that. Let's check out Fallout New Vegas. People love this game. Right off, you want these cherry tomatoes, but you got a hole in your neck. As you can see, once I tap the control icon, then my template button will head over to community layouts and bam, there are tons of layouts here. Now, perhaps some of you know, but I seem to remember in the past that layouts would have a Steam Deck icon if they were made with a Steam Deck in mind and a Steam Controller icon if they were made with a Steam Controller in mind, but none of these show the Steam Deck icon. Am I misremembering something here? It doesn't matter, but if you know the answer, let me know down below. Anyway, here you can see I've already downloaded this, and you can also see that it has 1,500 upvotes, meaning uh, people like it a lot. And you can see that people have played on this configuration on Steam for over 300,000 hours. That is a lot of hours. I'm going to select this and then check it out. Here's what I love to see. The person that made this layout does a much better job at this than me. They labeled things, not just what the button is that it's sending, but what the button actually does. R1 brings up your VAT system. I think that this one looks great. Let's press X to apply the layout and then see how it works. Okay, after trying that one, I'm not really a fan of it. So let's try another one. This one is by Bylund. It has nearly 5,000 upvotes and 68,000 hours played, which is less than the last one, but still a lot. I think they sort it by hours played instead of upvotes. Valve, I would love to be able to filter these in some way. Anyway, opening up this layout, we can see heavy use of the left trackpad with everything labeled. Plus, it has using gyro, which I prefer. So let's try this out. Press X to apply the layout and then the Steam button to get back into the game. Okay, this feels pretty great. Now, what I really like about this is that the layout is just the one Steam button away, so I can learn the layout. There are some definite changes that I wanna make to this. For instance, whoever made this uh, has haptic feedback on the joystick, which I personally don't like, so let's change that. I'm gonna press the Steam button, go into the edit layout, go down to joysticks, and then write joystick behavior. Now I'm gonna press the cog wheel and head down to haptics. Here you can see that they set haptic intensity to high. I'm gonna turn that off because I like to use haptics for track pads, not for sticks. Press the Steam button to get back into the game and test it out. That's much better. Let's see what they did with the left trackpad. Okay, this seems really good, but for me, it's hard to see. I get what they were going for, for something that blends in with the game, but I'm old and I've got old eyes, so let's make this a little bit more visible. Press the Steam button, go into your virtual menus. Oh, they have three virtual menus, that's interesting. Let's pick the middle one. Yep, that's the one that I was looking for. I'm going to change the colors. I'll show you how just once. Tap on an icon. You can change the icons if you want. I'll stick with the ones that they already have. Tap next. And I'm going to switch the background color to black, which makes it much easier to see this icon. I'll do the same with the rest of the inputs and let's see how that looks once I'm back in game. That looks much better. So hopefully this video showed you that you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you get a new game using Steam Input. It's a fairly easy to find good control schemes that other people have done the work for you. And speaking of control schemes, if you want to see how to add two, three, or even more inputs to a single button on your Steam Deck or your, or your Lenovo Legion Go S, then check out this video right here. From the Nerd Nest, I'm Bill. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you on the next one. Stay rad.